Hey guys, Case with Top Branch here. So we ended up building a log truck because when we first started out uh, doing doing tree work and things like that, we uh, had a dump trailer. And every every tree guy starts out this way. They have a dump trailer, they put the brush in it, they dump it, and then they say, to hell with this, let's get a chipper. We ended up getting a chipper and a chip truck. Um, and then of course you end up making logs and stuff like that. So ended up having to bring multiple pieces of equipment back to fill the dump trailer up and it was it was such a pain having to make 10 trips just to get a job all finished up so we end up saying well we need a log truck but we didn't want to pay a lot of money for it so we're going to kind of walk through this and tell you our thought process when we we're making when we were kind of deciding what truck to do and um, so that way it might help you guys out if you're going to be going down that similar path and if you can avoid any pitfalls or anything that we've done uh, maybe we can help you out that way so let's go check this truck out so as you can see it's a it's an international uh, 4200 with a 6.0 or 6.6 .6 liter in it uh, it was a it was a great truck but when we were looking at this truck it was actually just a frame uh, just a bare frame I think it was like 22 foot long or something like that enormous enormous thing um, but we ended up picking this truck up for about five grand. Its gross vehicle weight is about 26,000 pounds. So we said, well, a single axle would be nice for this. So that way we're under CDL, we're smaller, we can still be able to do our job and, and not have to worry about weight limits and things like that. So we ended up picking up this truck, five grand. Um, it just hydraulic brakes, hydraulic everything, super, super easy, super simple. It didn't have, um, so when, you, when you're when you getting a truck like this, you need some kind of a unit to power the, the, the crane and the boom and stuff like that. We ended up putting in uh, what they call a clutch pump. So we'll open the hood up. So you can either have the transmission uh, can power the, the pump or you can have a clutch pump and this we installed a clutch pump right here for I think it was like 2500 bucks uh, bought it and spec'd it out for about 14 gallons or so is about what we use to to do this and the truck does it on idle at like 700 rpm uh, powers the crane super easily don't have to do anything don't have to rev it up when you have your truck when you have your hydraulic pump there needs to be a tank to pull from it we ended up just fabbing up our own our own tank welded it all up made it because uh, it couldn't get one that was a correct size and we said well we want to have quite a bit of uh, fluid so that way it cools it off in the summertime we don't have to have a cooler and and uh and worry about uh hydraulics overheating and the, pro the problem that we were running into um, is finding a crane that was the size that was good for this big of a truck and we ended up having to uh, order this guy from China, we specced it all, specced it all out, gave them, gave them the numbers and things like that, and then we just uh, had them ship it over. There's a little bit of logistics and things like that that you'll have to worry about when doing that, but it made it so that way it was relatively cheap. I think we, it was probably seven grand tops when all said and done by ordering it there, having it shipped, paying taxes and things like that. So it wasn't wasn't terribly bad. And, and it was pretty simple to pretty simple to put up. Just feed it with hydraulics. The we had to change the change the seat a little bit more. We're gonna change it again. I don't like I don't like the hydraulics on it. Uh, it's all lever here and there, so you have to move a lot. It's not nice one fluid motion. We ended up getting some pilot controls from a uh, from an excavator. We're gonna put it in that and raise our seat height so we can slide everything backwards. That way, um, it's a little bit nicer, a little bit uh, more streamlined looking, and this is a lot of wasted space. I was gonna put a toolbox in there, but it's be a little bit of pain to get things in and out of it. So we're just gonna shrink the whole entire truck up some more. Then we ended up having to have a bed on this truck. The bed, the bed we ended up picking up for a thousand bucks at a salvage yard, uh, which just over in uh, Massachusetts. Looked at um, they take trucks apart when they get um, they take trucks apart when they get. A, uh, in an accident and we just picked this whole this guy up it was a 22 foot bed ended up cutting it, or 25 foot bed ended up cutting it up and and made it so that way we, we have a platform for another truck that we're creating and then we have a bed so we can put brush on this you can put logs on it you can it can do multiple things it is a little mix it adds a lot of weight to the truck so it, you can't haul as big of a load here and there but for what we're doing we don't have to worry about that and if we have a lot to move you just contract it out but we were thinking about also making this uh, bed tip back which is why uh, a lot of log trucks you see the gravel grabs two pieces of steel and holds it um, if we 
we ended up having, we ended up making this so that it's a tip body. So if we had brush and stuff like that, we wanted to just dump out instead of unloading it, we could do that. Uh, your grapple that you have, have it so that way it can close as much as possible is super nice a lot of times. When you have, uh, uh, when your trucks are end up being bigger, there's a different style of uh, more of a pinch type of uh, versus a bypass like this. This one's pain sometimes to be able to get the logs out of the pile, especially if you're gonna be sorting in different piles and stuff, that uh, this this uh, grapple, can, this style can be a pain. But for grabbing brush and for grabbing all this, all this other stuff, it's super nice. But the one that can close the most, uh, the, the the smallest is gonna be the, a lot of times the best option for if you're if you're kind of in the same industry that we are, the same stuff. So 16 grand and all this, plus some time that we had, so, if you said, well, if you're having somebody build it for you, we built this truck for, for about 20 grand and it's moved all this logs here and it's made us that much more productive and helps us helps us um, uh, do our job much quicker and much uh, much simpler and and it's add, it's made our margins that much bigger. And it's if you're thinking about it, definitely do it. Definitely help you out. Um, Feel free to leave any questions below. Like, subscribe if you have uh, if you got your own truck that you're working on. Uh, feel free to ask those questions and and call around. Uh, there's there's a lot of guys out there that have done this. Your local mechanic will probably have some idea. Um, but a little bit of a little bit of searching online, you guys should be able to do the same thing that we did. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. That's a wrap.